Okay, so we are playing some Dungeon Crawl Classics tonight, uh, more of the one-on-one -on -one sword and sorcery type uh, buddy team stuff. I have uh, Tony here as my player, and we're actually testing out something new tonight, the Zine Phantasmagoria. Well, not uh, this is a, kind of a sword and planet uh, edition for Dungeon Crawl Classics. Uh, Chance Phillips did. There's actually two of them now. I guess I don't know if the third one's coming up, but I have two so far. Um, and lots of cool stuff in it where Tony's going to play two of the classes from this. And uh, I'm actually, this is a, kind of, this adventure is part of Dragora's Dungeon. It's kind of a, a section of the the module uh, that we find our, our our heroes, we'll call them. I always say they're heroes at the beginning. We don't really know until we get going. <laughs> we find our heroes um, having entered in through a magical portal um, that uh, they believe was going somewhere else, or maybe they didn't know where it was going, but uh, where you've ended up is, uh, you know, you've, you've fallen not that far, that you take damage maybe like 10 feet into some water that's about uh, two feet deep. Um, so uh, you're looking around as you stand up um, and you see that the water is about knee high on a person. Um, you're looking around, it's very misty. Um, you can see the jungle, uh, basically a jungle, but the trees are all kind of dead with the uh, vines and moss hanging off of them and everything smells rotten above you and it's very wet um and you can kind of see uh all around kind of behind you we'll call it a, a, you know i don't know if you stood up but when you turn around there's like kind of a solid wall of stone uh that is natural but it's very sheer it goes straight up and you look up and you can kind of see like very low hanging clouds or mist um and it seems like it might be the middle of the day but it's hard to tell because it's very kind of um twilight we'll call it because or dusk because of the the amount of mist it's very kind of dark in here but um you probably just want to get the hell out of here um <laughs> that's your motivation so um tony let us know about your characters and kind of how you ended up in this predicament you have a yeah, first character, character you will you notice, notice is, um, um oh, I'm I'm much back. Back. oh let me mute myself all right. Uh, the first character you will notice is a um, a human male. He's older, older fellow, very worn lines from the years in his forehead and, and, and through his face. And he's got a uh, kind of a half patchy beard and mustache wearing this real heavy uh, brown jacket. And he has this uh, black cap pulled down and he jumps up out of the water and... <gasps> He's taking in of, of what he's looking around, and uh, hmm, this is not where I expected uh, for us to come out. Uh, uh, this is not anywhere close to being to the ship at all. That is uh, Theodore R. Trumpet Blower, the captain class from the Phantasmagoria, and as he's looking around. You hear the water splashing and moving, and you see a figure come up, a very small figure, and he's, help me, Captain, help me, Captain, I'm going to drown, I'm going to drown, it's, the water's too deep. And he jumps up, and then the water starts leveling back down to where he can breathe, and you see he's wearing this brown western-type hat, and he's holding his black powder pistol up real high, and can you let it, can you let it powder, can you let the powder, don't let the powder get wet, no, 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 uh, Captain, Captain, where are we, Captain? And that is the sidekick gremlin class, and his name is Svelte. And the captain doesn't even respond. He's just looking around, and he spits into the water and says, well, let's get out of the water first. Uh, you know, sometimes the water has uh, creatures that we don't want to face. And he starts walking, you know, to the closest dry land. Okay, so you see... Um Let's see. Uh, let me know if you have feedback. I turned the, the, the gain on the mic down, so hopefully I won't, you won't pick yourself up. Um, you see uh, that you're, you're kind of, you can feel under your feet as you're kind of walking, that you're on solid uh, kind of rock, like you're standing on a rock, apparently. Um, and out in front of you, what you kind of see is a swamp. So uh, there's water everywhere, but there are basically like uh, large trees that have interconnected vines that create kind of, for lack of a better word, like a highway that you could follow to stay kind of out of the water. Um, you will need to kind of make a leap or swim to them at this point. Um, you could try to run uh, and jump to them. You'll have to just make a DC 10 strength check to make it to the uh, 
to, to the first like a raised up tree area. And then from there, you, you should be able to walk without too much trouble. Yeah, you see the um, the gremlin Savelt go, Captain, Captain, please, please, let's take the easy way. I don't, I don't like going through the swamp. Uh, I may fall and fall through, but uh, uh, you're stronger than I am, so you go first, Captain. Go, Captain. And the Captain, even though he's an older uh, gentleman, he does still have very much strength about him, so he needs to make a strength check. Yeah, so a D20 plus strength modifier. If you go oh, a 17. Nice. Yeah, you make that leap, no problem. It's not that far, you know, but you have to jump, up, jump, jump out of the water, so it's a little bit of a stretch. And uh, you land on... Uh, there's, there's, they're kind of. You get the sense, even though the air is damp, so they're kind of wet in that sense. They're, these vines aren't soaked, so you don't think they ever go. Or, or the tree, uh, they're almost like mangrove uh, trees, so like the the roots are coming up out of the ground, um, and they're big. So you land on one, and it's it's pretty solid, and and seems like you could walk on it without too much trouble. Can he use like a rope to lower down to a pull pull savelt on up to him, or? Um, yeah, I mean, you could throw a rope over. It's kind of like a cross and up, you know, um, so it's not down per se, but if you throw a rope over to him and he jumps and you yank at the same time, I'll, I'll give you a, he can use one, uh, go up one die. So D24, um, you know, check. well, he would, wouldn't he, he'd had the D24 from the captain ability, right? Anyway. Yeah. Is that only for fighting though? Uh, no, it doesn't really say. It just oh. says additionally, any allies who do not have the D die within 10 feet, move their primary action die up one step. Okay, so yeah, then a D thirty. All right. <laughs> got to wait for it to stop rolling. <laughs> that will be a well. He's got a minus one his strength, so a fifteen. Oh, that's more than enough. Yeah. So with the with the the captain's probably more the captain's inspiration and uh, and just uh, him knowing that the captain will help him if he, if, the, if he happens to slip, uh, he's able to to make that leap pretty easily. Um, so I'm going to kind of explain. So you're basically outside. Just as a general thing, you're outside. And these, um, when I tell you, you can go left, right, or whatever, that's basically following the roots. You could always at any time get in the water if you want to swim um, or, you know, whatnot. But just so you, you have an idea of what the place looks like. Where's my map? Okay. So you kind of leapt over, we're just going to call it north to, to make so we have some fixed things. And you're on kind of like a small island, if for lack of a better word. Um, you kind of move forward and, and you don't really see much around that looks familiar at all. Um, as you follow it out onto these like wider parts, you can actually see that um, you could continue more or less going to the north, um, or you get cut across to the basically what will be the the southeast. So you're, you're kind of coming from the southwest in a sense, um, and you're kind of on you know yeah, I'm calling it like an island because it's an area of a lot of roots. Uh, it kind of branches off. Um, it's just a couple of smaller paths. Um, it looks like if you were to head kind of to the northish, you can run down some paths for a while before it comes to another island. Um, to the southeast, it looks like you go maybe like 20 feet or something. It goes to another island. So we'll call those like rooms, you know, if you want to treat it like that. Just can the captain tell by just looking would it appear uh, either one of the ways would have maybe more of the water flow going one way more than it does the other? Um, really, or if it's about all the same? I mean, it's like a swamp with a very, very slow, uh, you know, you don't see water really flowing, flowing. Um, you know, it's more like a lake or a swamp. So I would say you could, I mean, it'd be a very high DC. It'd be, it'd be like a DC 20 intelligence checks. And I'll give you some. Oh, he's, he's got, that's his highest stat intelligence. Oh. All right. Yeah, make so I'll try to D, D20 plus his mod. Yep. And try to get a 20 or better. Oh, no. Nope. Not with that roll. Yeah, it's really hard to tell. I mean, it would be would be an effort, but I mean, you are a captain, so maybe maybe you have a chance. But yeah, it's it's really hard to tell if the water goes. You do know this though the the since you came from the uh, kind of the south west, if you were to go more south, that's kind of you know that kind of wall sets off the area, um, and you could imagine if you imagine this entire swamp being inside of a giant room, as far as you can tell, because you're kind of in you're in the lower. Uh, which would be the southwest corner of the room, uh, you know. In other words, you can't really go much further south from than your starting point, um, though this this south each wouldn't take you that far south. Um, and, but you can definitely go north. You can't really go west any further. Like you know that. Like that's basically where you're at. If that makes sense. You have a captain. You know he's surveying all of this. Is you know Savelt is just chomping at the bit to you know. Uh, the captain goes well. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, um, 
Savelt, I guess we'll just go north, you know. Usually north leads to, um, uh, I think it'll lead to a more open area. I think we just should go north. And he takes off walking on the north path. I hope you're muted, Daniel, I guess, or... Yep, sorry, I muted myself. Um, <laughs> I guess I used it. Um, if you want to consider it almost like a dungeon, you know, just to, I'm just trying to do that for easier reference as far as if you're making a map or whatever. Um, you're heading up basically what, it can, what you can consider a corridor uh, to the north, which is just these fallen logs. Um, and as you as you head up, um, you make a, a will will save. A DC 15. For both of them? Yeah, for both of them. All if right. If you didn't succeed, you're good. The captain will fail, and let me look. I bet Savelle's going to fail, too. Yeah, they both fail. Okay, so you don't notice right away that, um, you know, because there's a lot of kind of trees and stuff going around. One of the, the like, whitish vines that's wrapped around a tree, um, as you get closer, uh, which one of them has the lower luck? I think they both had the same. Let me look. Yeah, they, but they're, both of their luck are nine. Okay, so um, the captain was going first. So we'll say yep, captain was going to lead the way. Okay, so he's moving forward, and this like white, you know, you see lots of these vines hanging down. This one kind of swings on in front of you and starts to dangle and wave, and you can just the even though there's not a lot of light in here because it's very muted because of the, all the mist, um, just the small rays of light are, are, are twinkling off the what is the the scales of this kind of giant snake, and it, it it's almost hypnotizing. And you're going to need to make a DC twelve will save. All right. Oh man, he fails that one too. Okay, so you are basically uh, okay. Out of that, you are are more or less dazed um, for you know an unknown amount of time. Uh, in which case, you really can't do anything but stand there and stare at this thing. Um, but however, uh, Seville can uh, can can make an action as the snake has started to essentially charm with the captain. Yeah. Uh, the captain, you know, is just cut off guard by this as he's looking and, and you know, so you know, kind of probably runs into the back of him as he's looking around at all this uh, strange uh, fauna and stuff. And he sees the snake and he just kind of sneaks around the side of the captain's leg and aims his black powder pistol and shoots at the snake. Okay. Let's see. Oh, that's good. That's uh, 23 to hit, and wow, good damage. Seven damage. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah, you blast this uh, this snake. It's just kind of hanging there. Um, the the bullet uh, penetrates through um, the center, the big fat center of it, and uh, and you can see a hole now in it, uh, and, and Icar is, is dripping out. Um, but the snake kind of starts to coil its tail and, and drops down, not dead. Um, let's roll initiative now. All right. So uh, let's just roll for roll for both of your characters because uh, the captain will eventually be free. Well, unless he dies. <laughs> let's see. Uh, Savelt will have um, eleven, and the captain has a three. Savelt, roll for the snake. Snake is plus five. Snake is twenty-four. Go to snake. Savelt and the captain. Okay, so it drops down, um, and you you see it kind of uh, open its mouth, and it's 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 the mouth on this thing. I mean, this is a giant snake, you know. It it it, it opens its mouth wide enough that you think you die. It could actually take the captain's head into it, uh, and, and uh, shoots forward um, to to bite into into him um, while he's. Uh, you know, mesmerized. So it's going to get a d24 die because you're helpless. All right. <laughs> it rolled crappy. Uh, they rolled a 12. Does that hit you? Uh, the captain, no, his armor class is 13. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, it leaps forward to to, to get the captain, but the 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 racking pain uh, in its gut from being shot through the round before causes it to come up short. It splashes down, uh, still shaking and shivering in the uh, the the lights uh, keeping the captain hypnotized, but um, it is now Svelte's turn. 
Yeah, Savelt, if he this is what he wants to do if he can in all one deal. His uh pistol's empty now, but he wants to reach in to the belt of the captain and pull out his black powder pistol and, and shoot it with the captain's pistol now. Ah. Um Yeah, I mean it's right there. I'll say you can do that. I'm gonna say if you want to do that, you'll be one die down because you're doing it the same round, but you're one die up because of the captain, so you'll be basically <laughs> back to D twenty, okay. Ooh, let's see. Uh, I don't think he has it. Nope, straight uh, 12 to hit. Okay, no. Shoot, you know, you draw the pistol quickly, uh, maybe too quickly, and, and shoot into the... Uh, you know, the snake's now more or less on the ground, slithering around, and the bullet just, just penetrates into the the, the rotten branches that are, that are kind of sitting there and, and misses. Um, it's the captain's turn, but he is uh, dazed. Let me just, I don't think you get another save until the end. Nope, you don't get another save. Okay, so... It's back up to the top to the snake. It's it starts to like swing around to try to get away from you know the area. It doesn't obviously doesn't understand that you don't have any more bullets or whatever. <laughs> so it starts to move kind of away to, to try to get put the captain between you and it, um, and then lunges forward at the captain's thigh to, to bite into his leg. <laughs> Rolled another nine, so misses. The snake is is uh, is a terrible aim. <laughs> um, huh. It is back down to Silk's turn. Oh, wow. He is going to, um, he doesn't have time to reload his pistol, so he just pulls out um, his um, occupation background was a taste tester. So he carries this very large fork with him, and he's just going to take this fork out and just try to spear straight into the snake with his fork. Nice. Who that ought to hit a 19. 19 hits. Ooh, uh, max damage with D4, four damage. Nice. This snake is not happy right now. Uh, okay. The 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 it's now the captain's turn. Who is dazed? The snake, um, feeling like maybe it's Matt's match, uh, plunges into the water um, and tries to to get away. You can get a, a an opportunity shot at it if you'd like. Uh, oh yeah, um, Savelle thinks that you know if he doesn't, you know that it'll be back with some friends. Is that what he's thinking? Oh so. uh, nope, better miss. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it 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 slingers past. You see some some kind of greenish gray icker kind of floating in the the dirty uh, moss covered water. Um, it, you know, stab at that, thinking that's the, the hole that you shot in it, but it's too late. It's already under the water and, and, and gone. You know, the water is moving, and then it's still again. And uh, yeah, Savelle, Savelle will go up, and, you know, he just, like like a child on a, on a parent's pant leg, you know, he's pulling the captain's pant leg, and he, you know, if he's still dazed, he'll he'll stand back and start reloading the pistols then. Okay, yeah. So you spend, you know, a couple, you know, it takes a turn or whatever to reload a pistol, and actually that's exactly how much longer the, the captain is uh, dazed for two more, so. By the time you get both pistols loaded back up, uh, the captain is kind of all of a sudden you can you you, you faintly w could understand what was going on, but not really. Almost like being very very drunk, uh, and now it's gone, and you, you can, you're kind of back in full uh, you know full intelligence. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Each of you can make a luck check. The captain, oh, they, wow. The <laughs> captain rolled a two. Savelle rolled a one. Wow. So they both make it. <laughs> All right, so Savelle is, is uh, the luckiest one. So as you're kind of, uh, you know, maybe you're, you're, Savelle is excited to to see the, the the captain start to move. You look past and you see another snake. And for a second, you're started. You start, and then you realize that it's actually a carving of a snake, um, kind of in one of the trees. So it's almost like a shrine in a sense, it's kind of off to the side. And you see something uh, uh, glimmering in the uh, the mouth of the snake. Yeah, uh, the captain, you know, he's getting his senses back, you know, and Savelle's handing him his pistol and Savelle goes, ah, I've got this one, Captain. I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. And he takes off running towards it. So he's going to go first. It's time to run up to it. And, and then when he sees what it is. Yes, yeah, so you can see that it's basically a... Uh, a tree that's been carved uh, in relief of, of a snake with using one of the vines to stick out and the snake's mouth is open. The snake is, it would look like a baby compared to the snake that you just battled, 
Um, but in its mouth, the thing that's glimmering is actually a, a, a small diamond. Yeah, before, um, you'll see, uh, as the captain's making his way up there and seeing it also, um, Savelle looks back and says, oh, captain, things things like this are, are they're just too easy. Just, just a moment. And you see him raise both of his arms up, and this mist starts, green mist starts flowing out of him, and he's going to cast his spell to take magic, to detect any magic in, on the diamond or in that area that may be. Oh, nice. Did you do material for it already? Or? Uh, no, I have not. Oh, all right, let's do that. Fun. Let me get my so it's a, it's a D100, isn't it? Yeah, D100 for the material effects. 58. 58. Oh, I think that's nothing. <laughs> that's always a bummer. <laughs> Let me just... <laughs> Magic. Material. And then the stuff in the dead center. Yeah, 58 is nothing. Okay, just normal. Bummer. <laughs> All right. Um, man, these D24s never stop rolling. <laughs> Ooh, that's going to be a good one because uh, he'll get a plus two. So that'll be a 20, modified 20. Oh, nice. For to take magic. So let's see magic. Wizard spells, I guess, right? Is that first level? Yeah, he's first level, and he's got a plus one modifier. He is, but the spell though isn't first level, is it? Yeah, uh, it's under um, it's on page uh, two sixty, I believe, because it's under the actual cleric spells. But it's oh, cleric spell. Okay, that makes sense. I know it's like a different other. Oh, I see it. Okay, twenty. Nice. Cleric can determine exactly what objects, creatures, are magically enchanted within range. Or this spell reveals creatures. Um, okay, so you check. Uh, can distinguish between magical creatures, non magical. Um, uh, no, nothing is, 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 uh, it's not magical. I mean, you probably, the, the duration is six turns, which is an hour, so we'll keep this, uh, all right, remind me you have it up, but, uh, yeah, you don't, uh, I mean, you maybe get like, you can see like on the ground where you shot the snake, there's some scales and stuff. You know, and those kind of glimmer slightly as if it's a it's a creature that uh, has a magical, uh, you know, uh, non mortal origin, as they say. Um, right. But um, but the 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 diamond is not, nor is the is the nor is the shrine. Yeah, once uh, Savelt knows for sure the uh, diamond's not uh, anything, he just reaches out and just grab it and scoop it up and go. Look here, Captain. Look here. Uh, we we got to find our way out of here. This 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 will, this will be valuable. Yeah, it should be a, a little bit of a valuable uh, trinket. You know, it's a, it's a decent, decent sized diamond. And he'll put it, you know, in a belt pouch or whatever. Okay. Yeah. So from where you are, you basically are. You know, this this happened when you were kind of on your way to the next like quote island, if you will, for lack of a better word. So you, you if you want to keep moving north, you can. Um, you know, there's still a bit ways to go, and uh, or you can go back the way you came. And, you, know. you have a captain, uh, you know, after Sabelle, you know, does that, a captain's getting all of his senses back. He says, well, we just continue north. Uh, uh, first mate, um, just just continue north. Uh, let, let me take the lead again, though, because I think I'll be ready this time if something appears out of the ordinary. And you see the captain take the lead again. Okay. Yeah, so you're moving along. This is probably like another like, it's fairly slow going because even though it's kind of um, it's treating it like a hallway, it's you're basically walking on you know uh, tree roots that are sticking out about our swamp. So you're moving slowly. Uh, so even though it's only maybe like a hundred yards or something, it takes a little bit to get to kind of the next flatter area. And as you're kind of moving up towards it, you can see that the trees themselves like start to spread out a bit. Um, and there's actually kind of um, mucky dirt you know it's so it is actually in this case more like a little bit of an island um and because the trees are all spread out there the limbs have all kinds of reached over to create almost like a almost like a ceiling so it's almost like you're going under a canopy of, of trees but since they're all dead you just see like lots of these like white and black vines just hanging down almost like a drapery kind of covering the area that, that's uh that's in front of you so you can't see very much very far in front of you because they're kind of blocking your way does it appear like the this just like all, all the greenery and stuff they've come through, but maybe this is just like a sudden change of it being more of a dead area as far as... Yeah, I mean, everything's been pretty dead, but most of the stuff's been like trees with like like 
<laughs> but that are more or less tall with kind of vines hanging straight down. These seem to like almost like form together, like they almost work. Um, you know, it's unnatural because um, it, it almost creates a, almost like you're inside of a building or a structure uh, by the way that the vines have all come above the top of it. You know, almost like yeah. So, so, so Val would want to use this to take magic in at noticing this and see if there's anything that you know if it's just a natural or if it's something that's been formed by. Um, it's not. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't look like it was. It, it's magical as is. I mean, maybe magic created it. You might think, but not so much that you detect magic would pick it up. You know, because it, it definitely seems odd. Um, but at the same time, it's not. Um, it's not magical in and of itself. Yeah, he he won't mention it to the captain. I mean, with it being a negative result, as far as he knows, he just he, he won't even mention anything about what he just did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's kind of probably just happening. You know, whenever you just kind of think about it. So, yeah, the only the only uh, the main obstacle here is that you're kind of blinded if you walk into these things because you, you're it's like walking through a uh, if you remember those uh, those like beaded things people used to hang in doorways. You know, to, oh yeah. So you can imagine that, but like a lot of them. So you'd have to like push your way through them if you want to continue north. So it's there's, no, there's no other way to go around them or anything? No other path? No, I mean, you could either push through them. Or, well, you could go in the water. You can always go in the water. So you could go in like the water off this little island thing and swim around it. Um, if you walk to the side and kind of look, you'd have to swim about maybe 30 yards to get to the next kind of area that's past this area. The captain just pulls out his sword, you know, and, and like large vines or something like we had a machete and just trying to push them out of the way. And he'll continue, you know, through the way they're going now. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so you take the sword and you like to use like chop it so you can walk through. Yeah, he'll just chop, you'll chop enough out of the way that because, you know, with Savelt being smaller, you know, the captain just chops enough out of the way that they can kind of ease through slowly. Okay. Yeah. So you're chopping through this stuff and uh, make a luck check. For a captain, okay? Yeah, for the captain. That will be a fail. Okay. All right, so you chop through right next to you, but not on uh, the creature that's in the vines. <laughs> huh. So, so it, it swings forward. Um, it's actually a creature hanging from the top that disguises itself as vines. It's not magical. It's a natural creature. Um, and it, it, re it reaches out with ropey uh, appendages and attacks each of you, because we can attack each of you the first round. Um, so the first one attack is against the captain. Ooh, that is uh, 17, so that hits. Yep, his is 13, so it hits him. Yes, so it's D3 damage. One point. One point for the captain, okay. And against the spell, uh, 17, 18 to hit. Yeah, his AC is just 10. Okay. One point of damage. <laughs> All right. Now, what happens if you get hit? Or the vine are strong enough to. Okay, so you are uh, basically grappled by it. So it can it can basically hold you, so you can't run away. But it's not stopping you from attacking it if you want to, you know, swing at it or shoot it or whatever. So you're not uh, um, you're not impeded from attacking or trying to cut yourself free. Like you're not like wrapped up in it like a spider web. But you can't really you can't run at this point until you get yourself away. All right. So we yeah, need to roll initiative, huh? Yeah, let's roll initiative. Here. You rolled a one. Uh, Savelle will have a 21. Nice. And the captain has a 16. Nice. Creature rolled a one. So, uh, oh. so uh, you're, you're held by the vines. Um, uh, what would you like to do? Uh, let's see. Let me read something real quick, even though he's first. Uh, um. He is going to um, pull out his um, fork again and, and, and stab at it. Okay. Go for it. Uh, a 10? No, I don't mind that yet. No, it's not going to hit. You jab at this thing, but the, the vine is, is surprisingly thick and springy. So uh, it, it resists your, your, your fork. And the captain's... The, um, Captain, if he can, this is, I don't know, we we'll have to adjudicate this as, he wants to use that sword play now that it's his turn, yep. and he's just going to yell back at a Savelle first and go, uh, let me handle this, um, 
even though he's got us uh, tangled up, I think I can get a precision strike on him and take him down quick. And I only use the uh, sword play precise strike, okay. which decreases my die chain by one. But if it does hit, he'll do double damage. Oh, nice. All right, yeah, that's cool. So let me find the D16. Hot dog, a 13 plus 3 is 16. That definitely hits. Oh, wow, almost max damage on both of them. Um, oh, wow, and he gets plus 2 to damage, so 17 damage. He had an 8, a 7 for 15 plus 2. Holy shit. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's enough to kill it. So you, you do as you said. <laughs> Stay back. And you stab into this. What seems to be the, um, you know, and a precise strike is really maybe was the best bet because this creature does have kind of a, a more uh, kind of a, a heavier, for lack of a better word, like root in the center with all these vines hanging around. And, uh, you know, the, the captain brings his sword through the, the, the tangle of vines and into that, uh, we'll say, the heart of the creature. Um, and you feel that the, the vines are wrapped around you, loosen as it falls to the ground. And it basically looks like kind of a, a, a ball of like roots with like the longer roots being, you know, the long vines that went on at you. Um, and it probably moves around almost like, like with like uh, on the vines, like spider legs, you would imagine. Um, if you're imagining how this thing would move around, but it's not moving now because it is dead. Um, yeah, and he it, just, you know, he uh, just kind of at first brings his sword up like he's going to resheath it and he just looks at the uh, gore and stuff on and wipes it off. And he looks back towards uh, Seth and he goes, uh, we must continue forward. We will eventually find our way out of here. Like it was just nothing, you know. He just did what he normally does, and he'll continue forward, man. So you also noticed, like, as you did that, like it fell down. You kind of like uh, look around and you see like patches of the vines that that you were walking through, kind of drop and like scur scurry off into the water. Like there was more of these things hiding in here, but you killed that thing so quickly uh, that they they seem you seem to have scared them off. Um, and you can, yeah, of course, you know, of course, you know, Savelle takes notice of that. Captain, Captain, did you see? Did you see that? Did you see that? And he goes, "Yes, but we must continue forward. Continue forward." <laughs> the captain just takes off walking. Yes, yeah, so you can now because enough of them have fallen away. You don't even really have to chop your way through. You can kind of just like walk through the path of where they had left. Um, and you end up uh, at the end of this like island. There's a, this kind of like a what would be almost like a log bridge where a tree had fallen down, and that reaches across to another island that is almost completely free of vegetation. Um, it's basically just muddy uh, dirt and rocks. That's At this point, you're kind of starting to turn to more eastward. Um, you know, you can't go north anymore unless you were to jump in the water and swim. Yeah, he'll just follow the easiest trail if it turns eastward, you know, he'll he'll go that way. Okay, yeah. So you, you end up on this, on this uh, island I guess for lack of a better word, and you're looking around and, and you can actually see to the north there is another island, but it's uh, you'd have to, again, swim uh, through about 15 yards or so of water to get to it. Um, to the east, um, there's another one of these fallen trees that leads off to another small kind of island area if you wanted to do. That would be the path of least resistance without having to go through the water. Yeah, he'll stay out of the water as long as they can if, there, if there's a way that, you know, Path of least resistance, as you say, he'll go that way. Yeah, nobody wants to swim. <laughs> no one wants to swim either. <laughs> so, all right, so you cross across to the east, um, and you're on the other kind of a, a smaller island. This one has got like a mixture of like kind of like uh, low kind of shrubbery and, and mud. It's kind of mucky. Um, you look off now to the kind of the southeast of you, and you can see that this is across the water. You're looking at about 30 yards. You can see that there is let's see, let's see, let's see, uh, uh, an island rises out of the muck and mire. Um, uh, it's full of, okay, through the dying marsh grasses, vines and rotting slumps. Um, you look like what looks like a ruined structure of an aqueduct. So you think now, and now you can probably, uh, yeah, at this point, you're closer to it. You can probably see that water is coming from this direction. Uh, to get to that, you would have to swim. Uh, unless you have some means to travel across the water without swimming, uh, about 30 yards. Or um, you could go follow the trees like you have been doing. Um, you could follow them down to the southwest. That seems to go to another island. So the only way to get to the structure would be swimming for sure. Yeah, at this point, I mean, there might be other ways. If you, I guess, well, I guess you can see all that. So you can see that to the south, although you can't see great greatly, 
there is a landmass that like brings you to it, but you'd have to get to that landmass first. So you like you can't get there from here if you if you know what I mean. Oh, okay, yeah. I got you. You can either go back the way you came, which is to the south, or you could go this way, which is also bringing it into the south. Uh, but as, at this point, you can't um, you can't get directly there. Can either the captain or Savell just by looking at this? Uh, can they tell like this probably appears to be pretty old, or does it appear to be maybe yeah, still it's maintained in some point? Or no, it's definitely ancient, and it looks like it's not maintained. Like if you can see that this parts are broken and stuff, and water is just like dripping uh, past it. Um, it definitely looks ancient. Yeah, but Captain's pretty intelligent, so knowing that, he's just going to look back at Savelle and go, well, I don't think there's anybody uh, over there doing any kind of uh, uh, maintenance on it or anything, so there's probably nobody there. There's probably just more creatures and things that we probably have not met yet, so we're not going to find anything or get any help from there, so let's go back the other way. And you said there's like another path we can go and continue to follow an easy path? Yeah, if you want to, you know, not go back to where you came, but but follow like the easy path, that would be. And now you're going kind of to the southwest. So yeah, comes, you'll, you'll take that path then. Okay. Yeah, you cross over some branches and, and onto another uh, island, um, and you kind of walk south on that island to the end of it. And you can see now that there's a break in it, and, and almost always, well, always so far, you've been able to kind of like use trees to get from island to island. But now you've reached the end of this island, and there's about a ten yard gap between it and another substantial island but there are some like rocks um you could if you want to stay out of the water you could try to do like a leap uh between the rocks that's going to be a a dc10 uh agility uh test if you want to like uh you know leapfrog from from stone to stone to get to the other island or if you have you know some other means that you can could the captain like uh go first and then like throw a rope back to savelt to tie him off each time in case he wants to fall but he could maybe try to jerk and pull him up yeah, I mean, because it's not up, I think if you, if you tie a rope to him, he'll still fall in the water, but you can pull him back up by the water. Yeah, he'll do that, man, because, you know, he knows Savelle's probably not as good at this kind of stuff as he is, but he'll go first and try to jump across then. Okay, so DC 10, uh, Jill. Oh, wow, good, 16. Okay, yeah, you're able to do it. Uh, and, you know, they're slippery and stuff, but, you know, you have, the, you know, nice long legs, and, you know, they're a captain, so you probably have some. Some, some sea legs or whatever. <laughs> We're not sure what you're a captain of, but <laughs> Captain Warren. Huh. Uh, so you you uh, you you make your way across no problem. And, and if you want to toss that rope back, you can do that. Yeah, he'll toss the rope back to Savelt, and man, this thing will never stop rolling. Oops, no, it's not good. It stopped on a five, so Savelt oh. will fall fail. Yeah, unless you want to burn luck or something, yeah, you're gonna fall. For sure. That's a lot. Uh, no, it'd be yeah. You have to use almost all his luck now. Are right, you splash into the into the water, um, and the captain can pull you up? But go ahead and make a luck check first to see if you for Savelt, okay? Yeah, let's see if you draw the attention. right on the money. Nine out of nine. Perfect. Yeah, you splash in the water. Um, you know where you land is not particularly deep. Uh, you know, so you kind of slip off. You're like, whoa! Sh but you, when you, even though he's not very tall, you know, it ends like a foot of water. So you're like, oh, that wasn't very deep right there at all. Maybe it was right at the very end. And you make the final leap over and you, you get onto the island with the captain. Um, this one, as you turn around now, you can see this one is also very vine uh, covered. And not as bad as the one where you encountered the creature, but it has a similar vibe to it. Um, you see lots of these kind of vines coming down. I mean, you know that they weren't all creatures on the other island, but you think this could be a place where um, you might encounter them again. Yeah, they'll be ready then. The captain's going to maneuver along with his sword out. And, of course, the belt has... Um uh, the fork in one hand, the pistol in the other. Okay. Let's see. So you're coming through, and um, and you definitely see, because you're paying attention, you can see some of the vines seem to be moving a little bit unnaturally. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you surprise on the creature um, before we roll on the ship. So you can make a move if you want. Um, you see one creature in front of you that seems like it's one of these uh, vine creatures. Yeah, but Captain's just going to... Um... Let's see which deal he wants to use for this. Um, he on this one, he's going to look uh, back at seeing that. He's going to tell Savelt, once again, once again, uh, first mate, uh, you just stay here and, and watch things. I have this. And he's going to leap forward, and you see him do it in, in, into a parry motion. So I'm going to use parry. Well, that will give me a plus two to my AC. Oh, cool. Okay. And you get your attack first. 
Yep, and he will try to sword into it. Uh, 16 to hit. That hits. Uh, roll a 1 plus 2, so 3 damage. Okay. You stab into it, and it, 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 it reaches out, uh, you know, instinctively with its, uh, with its vines and uh, lashes at you, but because it only has a 10-foot reach and you move forward to it, so it can only attack the captain at this point. Um... My ability to do math right now is better. Okay, there we go. All right, so it's going to shoot out at the captain with its vine. Oof, 19. So it's going to hit. Yep. Ooh, that time three points of damage. This one's a little bit All right. This one it wraps tightly around, you know, your body and squeezes and, and, and uh, you feel pain um, hit you. And uh, let's roll initiative. All righty. The captain will have a 15. Savelt has a 1. Okay. Okay, so huh. Captain the Vine, that's about, well, it's the captain's uh, move. You can do what you like. Yeah, he's going to try to continue, you know, his parry, keep his parry going and try to um, to uh, strike into it again with his sword. Uh, 14 to hit. Uh, yeah, that hits, exactly. That's it's 7 tough. damage, 5 plus 10, oh, wow. so 7 okay. damage. Wow, okay, yeah. You cut this thing and it, it, it actually, uh, it like almost staggers. A little bit and like uh it, you see it like drop a bit and you think it's dead but then it like lands on the ground and starts to pull you and yank you towards the water um oh, no. c7 strength check strength, strength check okay oh yeah uh, 17. okay yeah so it's it tries to pull you like as it as it goes into the water it's trying to pull you down and uh you just you're too strong for it so it lets go and, and it splashes into the water um and you know you you breathe the sigh of relief as this thing's gone and uh, yeah, so from this island, you can basically, you come south now, you, you probably recognize that if you were now to go west, which you could do kind of northwest, actually, um, you would end up back kind of close to where you started. Um, but you could also follow, uh, you could also go southeast from here. Yeah, he, he wouldn't go back. He, he would could try to go a different way. So I guess southeast then. Yeah. Cool. So you go southeast, you end up on another uh, kind of island. This one's kind of mucky, um, but no real vegetation, kind of like the other one that you were on before. Um, and if you were to cross it, the on the other side of it, you see a uh, you know a log that, that's kind of going to the northeast a bit. So it's starting to turn back around and head north again. Yep, you'll continue following it, man. Cool. Nice. All right, so you're following uh, this path. You're walking along to this mucky land, and then all of a sudden, you feel your feet start to sink and make a DC 10 reflex save. Just for the captain, okay? Um, yeah, we'll say the captain. Oh, yeah, a uh, reflex. Yeah, that'll be 15, man. Okay, so you, you jump out of this, uh, you know, this muck. Uh, so they can make a, a luck check to not get in it because he sees the captain. Huh, nine out of nine again. All right, yeah, so you see, you see the captain leap fast enough, and then you kind of you can kind of like poke the ground or whatever, maybe with a stick that's floating around, or just with your foot and see kind of where the softer area is, and, and make your way around this like this kind of mucky uh, pit of uh, you know, lack of better with a quicksand kind of you know uh, mud that would suck you in, um, and you make your way around it, um, and there's a uh, as I mentioned, there's kind of you're kind of going up this path. To the now you're really heading northeast, and let's see, make make just a DC ten will check. Oh, I heard will check, but I didn't hear how what a DC ten will will save rather not check for both of them. Okay, uh, yeah, maybe both. If, if if either one passes, it's good. The captain will fail, um, and Savelle fails too. The cap okay. the Savelle failed worse. <laughs> Okay, but the captain's in the lead, so you're, you still has a tiny bit of deja vu as a uh, uh, a large snake with uh, uh, glimmering scales drops from the tree in front of the captain and starts to do its dance. So go ahead and make a, uh, a DC-12 will save, Captain. All right. Oh, this one he'll make a 15. Okay, yeah, you've seen this before, so you uh, you have no problem, and we can just roll go right into initiative. 
12, uh, you have 12 for the captain and 22 for um, Savelle. All right, so it goes Savelle, then the snake, then the captain. Okay, so once again, so you see this giant snake drop down in front of the captain. Don't don't look at him, Captain. Do, do, do not look at him. Do not go in eyes. That, that's that's the problem. Do not look at him. And um, Savelle is going to um, just concentrate. I guess his detect magic is still up. Yeah, and you can you can tell that this creature is is a bit of a of a magical you know has a magical origin that you, know, you can tell by its uh, hypnotic power and stuff. Yeah, he is going to um, the, just tell that to the captain. Captain, I detect all this magic. It, it, it's something we need to watch. It's, it's we, we, we need to be careful. And that's pretty much all he's going to do since he's in the back. Um, the captain so, is going to look out and... So even though that you passed uh, your, your save with the captain, I'm sorry, you're minus one die on all actions while you're fighting this thing because... Oh, no, it's only for this round, one round. Sorry. For this first round, you're minus one die. For uh, for attacks, just for the captain, yeah. Uh, for anything, right. attack or anything you need. Yeah. But is it, let's see, he's he's not. Is is it? No, it's not his turn. It's the snake's turn, isn't it? It's the snake's turn first. So yeah. yeah. All right. So the snake is going to. Uh, well, the captain's in the front, so the snake's gonna. Although it says it goes after. Let me just check. I'm gonna roll randomly. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll its attack. If it's an even number, it's gonna go after. It's gonna shoot past and try to get Svel because he's smaller. Because um, that's what snakes do. And if it's an odd number, it's gonna go after the captain because you're in front. Okay, it's 19, so it's going after the captain. Um, 19. Right. Well, that hits. It doesn't without his bonus. So it's gonna do a D5 damage. Oh, only one point. All right. <laughs> Bites into you. Um, uh, if the creature is the bite attack, okay, so it bites you and it's kind of like locked in onto you for for right now. Um, yeah, the uh, the captain will look at this snake and he's got his sword out. He goes, um, "That is nothing. I have, I have faced worse. I am going to faint you." And he's going to use the faint deal where he has to roll his attack twice. And oh, that's a cool one. Uh, oh, first one is a nat one. Oh, that's. Hmm. And the second one is a oh, it's not much better. It's a seven, so they both miss. Okay, so uh, if yeah. both are a failure, the faint fails. So yeah, so the that one, man. Yeah, so you fumbled. I guess it still counts as a fumble, right? I, I guess I would think so, yeah, because it says if uh, both of mine or both attacks are failures, that the faint will completely fail them. Yeah, because if you had fumbled but then succeeded in the other one, so the faint succeeded, I'd say you wouldn't fumble. But since you fumble, fumbled. Let's do a fumble. So what is your fumble die? It is a... Um, well, I don't know if it was on that sheet. Hmm. Well, what kind of armor have you got? Uh, he's just wearing like... Well, I, I, I scaled it as light, like light armor just to pretend like that big jacket. Oh, okay. So like leather? Yeah, kind of like a leather, big heavy leather jacket. Well, what would you give yourself for a bonus? We'll just do it that way. Whatever has the... Uh, plus two. Okay, so let's see. So we look at armor. The leather has a plus two bonus, and the check penalty is minus one, and the fumble dies D8. So let's do that. So D8 for fumble. A D8, okay. Oh, an eight. Oh, no. It is modified by luck. So if you have any bonuses, your luck. Uh, no, it's, uh, I think it's just zero, yeah, because he's got nine luck, so... Okay. Uh, all right. So you accidentally smash your weapon against a solid, unyielding object, rock, or even like, probably the, a rock. Mundane weapons are ruined, so you smash your sword. Uh, oh, no. You, you know, you, you faint and then maybe like slide and swing and, and smash into a rock, and the sword uh, shatters. Um, and that that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, it is. Very bad. <laughs> you don't want to lose your sword in the middle of the, the, the thing. Um, okay. So that's his turn. And now it's back to Svelte. Svelte, so is seeing this as a uh, captain. It, it has you under. It has you under its power. You, 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 you're not doing well. Get out of the way! And Svelte's going to take off running with his uh, fork in his hand and run and jump and try to stab it. Nice. Huh. Uh, sixteen to hit. But that does not hit. That's a seventeen. Oh wow. Yes. Yeah, and uh, so he misses as he tries to lunge and jump and stab the fork in the 
Yeah, you, you probably, the last one was maybe a little bit of a smaller one, and you put, penetrated it, no problem with the fork, so maybe you didn't give away enough strength, and you, you hit the thing, and the fork kind of bounces off. Um, the snake's turn, it's going to try to, it, it opens its mouth wide and tries to uh, swallow the captain whole. <laughs> so, okay, so it says, if the, if the creature hits with the bite attack, it can, which it did last round, it can attempt to swallow the victim whole in the next round, so this round. So you have to make a DC 15 strength result. A strength check, okay. Or you get swallowed. <laughs> Ooh, I rolled a 19 plus 2, so 21. Okay, actually, it says if the result is a 20 plus, the target is freed, and it has to actually make another uh, successful attack before it can try to swallow you again. So that's good, actually. That's a good result. Oh, so wait, great. Go ahead. Yeah, but um, the captain, you know, sees what's coming, so yeah, he wiggles his way out of it, and, you know, he's trying to decide now what he's going to use for a weapon. Yes, as, yeah, you're, you're staring down this uh, this giant snake, uh, and it's the captain's turn. Yeah, the captain will, um, it seems that he's ruined his sword, you know, he just lets it drop in the water or whatever, knowing it's completely ruined now, and he reaches across on his back, and if he's going to pull out a piece. He was His occupation was a miner, so he has a pickaxe, and he's just going to take a pickaxe and try to jam down into it. Nice. Because he doesn't want to try to shoot it right now. Uh, that's gonna miss real bad. No, not real bad, but it's gonna miss. Okay, yeah, you pull it the pickaxe, but it's you know the snake is pretty fast. This one's uh, since it hadn't got shot already before you got into combat with it, it's uh, it's actually much more agile than the first snake. So you guys are uh, facing a bit of a tougher opponent. Um, so he's gonna continue with his little fork then, because that's all. You know, he's thinking maybe if he can stab into it with his fork, it's gonna make it you know run away. Uh, nope, that's a 15, so that misses. Oh, jeez. Oh, you got the, got the first snake really quickly. <laughs> it's doing a little better. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing because it's making another attack, and you're both on it. So even number of attacks spelled odd attack, Captain. Oh, my God, I rolled a 20. Oh, that's the Captain. And it's a crit. Crit on the Captain, okay. Crit on the Captain. Um... Okay, so let me just do the damage first before I forget. Well, at least I lasted longer than Yong, I guess. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> already... All right, so uh, D5, two points of damage. So that's not too All bad. right. And it's crit. Let's see. It's monster crits. Crits. Nope, that's in the GM section. They're the rules. No, it's not. Yeah, it's in the monster section. I always forget where it is. I need to, like, make my own. A little cheat cheater. Okay, so M. All right, so crits by monsters. And I'm going to look. It is a all other. And it is four hit die. So it is on the monster table with a D10. Okay, so there we go. D10. There we go. Two. All right, that's not bad. Uh, stunning blow. The PC falls uh, to the bottom of initiative count. Which you were already there. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, for the remainder of the battle. Okay, so you were already at the bottom. So there you go. So that it did almost nothing to you. <laughs> but you still. All did. right. Yeah, and it beat it. So it is actually your turn now. Yeah, but Captain has that pickaxe and is seeing that things are getting dire. You know, he sees that the, you know, they could probably run back the way they come from. But he's going to try one more time to pickaxe it. Oh, that ought to hit. Uh, Sixteen plus two. So, I mean, plus three, so nineteen. But it only does three points of damage. You rolled a one on damage plus two. Okay, well. Finally, the snake takes a blow and some ichor drips from it. Um, it doesn't seem too uh, terribly hurt by that. Um, it's definitely hurt, but not terribly hurt by that. And it's back up to Svelte. What is uh Can Svelte see on past the way they were going? Like, what he can see past them real quick? Yes. Um, you, you actually look, uh, you know, and it looks like the island that you're on kind of wraps around a bit to the east. But you can actually see that then it looks like it, it goes up a bit and then ends up on that bigger island that had that uh, aqueduct. You're almost you're almost at that spot now. He's going to tell that to the captain and go, Captain, Captain, run, run this way. We can we can get to the safe spot. And he's going to just take off running then towards that way if he can. Okay, the snake's going to lash out at you, of course. Uh, All right. Yeah. He'll take a chance. Yep. Yeah. Huh, two. It doesn't. Uh, it's too busy wrapped around the captain to, to be able to... Uh, it, it more hisses at you than anything else as you run past it. 
Okay. Oh, good. Cool. So you run past it. It is now um, the larger than the snake's turn. Um, the snake's, because it just bit into the captain, it has the chance to try to swallow him again. So DC 15 strength check to not be swallowed. Oh, man, this would have been interesting. <laughs> oh, I rolled a 15, and I have a plus one. I think I have some 16. Okay, yeah. So you are not swallowed, but you can't run because you're basically tied up by the snake right now. Um, All right. But it is your turn. Well, can he, can he try to break loose from it? Something to break loose from it? Or? You can do another strike check if you want. It has to be 20 plus to break free. I wonder if, I, I wonder if any of those uh, abilities he has is something like that. I don't know. Let's see. Um, let me do real quick. Nope, I don't see anything that would come into play with that. So, um, yeah, he's going to try to break loose from a DC 20. Uh, yes. Because he's got plus two on strength, so maybe. Nope, he misses. Okay. Yeah, snake's still holding you. Um, it comes back around to spell. You're running up to the uh, to the flat area near the aqueduct to get away. Make a luck check. Yeah, yeah, I said, okay, a luck check. Yep, he'll pass. Okay, good. You you are running and you stop just in time as you see that like part of the ground there it seems a slight bit lower than the rest, um, and it looks like it could be either more of that mud or whatever. And you look and and and, uh, and you think if you had run run another like five feet you might have fallen into a very big hole. <laughs> That's oh, like man. with mud as you as you stop maybe on that island. What do you want to do? Yeah, he, he's how far would he be ahead of where they are right now? Would you say? Um, well, there's a, uh, you're probably, well, you, we can move thirty, so you're you're thirty feet away. You're you're about you're about thirty-ish feet from where the, where the captain. Is. Yeah. yeah, he's just going to yell back at the captain. Go, captain, captain! I knew break loose. I know you can break, break, break loose. Come on! And he's going to stand there and wait on the captain. Then. Okay. Yeah. So you're right near this like sinkhole mud pit. Um, you're not quite at the aqueduct part itself. You're you're kind of on that island right before it. Um, and it is the snake's turn, so it's going to try to swallow you again. So make a DC 15 strength check. Oh man, failed by one. Okay, so you're being swallowed. So I mean, it takes a while for a snake to completely swallow you. So it, it gets on you. We'll say on your head, <laughs> or wherever a snake would go to start swallowing you, um, and it's going to start bringing you in um, to itself. You're going to take D5 damage. Uh, D5. There's three points of damage. How many? Three. That will take the captain to zero exactly. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So you will. You will. The snake. You know. The captain stops wiggling, and uh, the snake is continuing to to swallow you. Yeah. So Velt is seeing that, and then he's going to run back with his pistol and shoot at the snake. Then. Okay. Yeah, I'll give you an extra well, an extra die because it's it's not really helpless, but it's swallowing its food right now, so it's not really like you know I'm gonna put it as a, as that mode. And plus, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna run you know, within range of the pistol, you know, probably twenty feet from from them, and you know just shoot at the snake, knowing that it's hopeless for the captain now. So, oh my god, I rolled a nat one. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh boy. Wow. But you're not wearing any uh, armor, right? So your fumble is only. No, he's just yeah, he's just regular clothes. Yeah. You got a D four then fumble. Hopefully you don't get shoot yourself in the face. <laughs> a three. Oh well, fumble three. The weapon comes loose in your hand. You quickly grab it, but the grip uh, is disrupted. You minus two penalty and next attack roll. Okay, so yeah, you you. Uh, I mean, based on that, I'm actually gonna make a luck check. If you make it, if you succeed, you didn't fire it. You just let it starts to slip, so you you just don't shoot. All right. And I'll give you a shot. Nope, he'll fail this luck check. Okay, so you, the gun goes off then when you do that, and it shoots into the ground. Uh, so yeah, yeah. When, it, when it does, you know, he's probably think it's this primer and other thing that's got wet and all that. So he just curses and uh, I'm sorry, Captain. I'm sorry. I'll, uh, I've got to continue though. Uh, one of us has to. Get out of here, and he pats his belt pouch where the diamond is, and he takes off running back the way and stops right before he gets to that land change to try to figure out how he's going to get to the aqueduct. Okay, yeah, you can you can definitely, because you saw it, um, the snake's not going to chase you because it's it's eating the captain, you know. Um, you would continue to take a D5, and you know, until you get out or whatever. But uh, if nobody comes to rescue you, you'll be digested probably. Um, so you... 
uh, run to the run past that uh, mucky what might be a sinkhole because you recognized it and you're kind of at the edge of the aqueduct. Um, you look down and you can see that the at the bottom it looks like there's like a cave down there, a very small cave. Um, let me see. Grotto. A uh, thin trickle of water splashes down slick stones into a small cave below. Um, so you can climb down the aqueduct if you want. It's um, about 20 foot down. You just need to make a uh, DC 10 agility or climb check to get down unhurt. Otherwise, you'll take a D6 falling damage because you'll slip. And that's the only way that he sees that he can go? Um, yeah, I mean, you could. Well, that's the only way you can get down the aqueduct. You could you could swim, you know. Uh, you, could, you could get in the water. That'd be the other nah, way. No, he, he doesn't like water, so he's going to try to take the other way in. So DC 10? Yeah. Oh man, um, God, I don't want to burn that much luck. He'll fail with a four. Oh boy, okay, yeah. So you're gonna take a d6 as you slide. So you 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 treat the aqueduct kind of like a slide, but it's broken, so you kind of fall a bit at the end. Oh my God, you take six points of damage. That'll put him in negative one. Oh my God. Yeah, he had, he had five HP left, so. Oh, jeez. Okay, so you slide down the aqueduct. You, you splash in the water, and your your head hits the stone there. And as kind of blood is dripping out of the side of your head, you kind of look, and you blink, and you can see there's a uh, a cave there. And in the cave are some skeletons of possibly other people who were trapped there at some point and never were able to get out, much like you. Yep, and right before he dies, you know, he takes the, uh, knowing that it, it's the end, he pulls that diamond out, and he goes... Uh, I'm sorry, Captain. I'm I'm sorry the snake got you. And I'm sorry this happened to me, but it was, it was mine. It was my precious. <laughs> nice. Huh. Excellent. Oh man. Yeah, that snake got you. It was a bad. That's funny how good roll 